happy Friday. I am joined today. I'm Mike Hornby, by the way. I'm joined today by a bunch of Trump haters. Um, all five of you. I don't need to do an introduction because I, I think all five, including David Valente on the phone, are all Trump haters. So that's the introduction for the day. We're joined by Mike Height or Good Delegate morning. Height. Good morning. Mr. Call. Hate Biden, too. Goodbye. <laughs> you hate them all equally. <laughs> the Admiral Bill Selbafield. Good morning, Mike. And Mr. Schultz, how are you, sir? I'm glad to be here in such a uh, great fellow feeling room. <laughs> <laughs> and joining us by phone is Dave Valente. Dave, can you hear us? I can hear you. Good, good, good. Um, so it's been a busy week. Um, we're going to just jump right into it. And last time we were here, I left out Mr. Carl at the end of a segment, so I'm going to let Mike start first this, this time with the first topic of discussion. Well, thank, thank you. I appreciate the consideration. Um, one of the things that is, you know, the, the coming election is going to be wild from top, you know, national level all the way down, all the way down to local elections and, and a specific area that's, that's of real interest to me is you know uh, Senator Trump has already announced he's going to run for the Supreme Court <clears throat> and he, he plays a real important role uh, in the current uh, Senate Republican leadership and Senator Blair depends on him a lot and so who who becomes the the uh, you know uh, judiciary chair uh, will be important, but, but but even to me, you know, locally important is who who will run for uh, Trump's seat. And I tried uh, to see the the current the incumbent delegates <clears throat> whose you know delegate districts are within the uh, district fifth Senate. District 15, that, that would be, you know, where they'll be, become an open seat. And, and uh, I, I did the best I could, but, but uh, uh, and the first thing I noted is, is you know, not, not surprisingly, every one of them's a Republican. <laughs> and, but, but I, I, I think this is the list of, of delegates who are currently reside so that they could be eligible, to, you know, currently where they live to run. To be appointed. Well, or to run in the future. Yeah, yeah, to, yeah. Run, to run to replace uh, Senator Trump when he moves on. And and to, and I think this is the answer. Um, Rick Hillebrand from Hampshire County. Um, Darren Thorne from Hampshire County. George Miller from Morgan County. Yes. Uh, Don Force, Berkeley County. Mike Height, Berkeley County. And Mike Hornby, Berkeley County. Now, now it doesn't mean there there won't be other uh, people, run, you know, you know, who aren't currently <laughs> in the House of Delegates running. No, I don't think I am in Craig's district. Yeah. I think I'm in yeah, um, Jason's. Uh, but really? I think Mike is. Yeah, okay. I, I'm in Jason's. Okay. Um, yes. Okay. But well, isn't the rule but, that yeah, only Bill. one can be from Berkeley County? That is yeah, so, you, so everybody from Berkeley County on your list is eliminated. Is right? eliminated, yeah. yeah. Because you have Craig Blair there. Oh, you can't have... You no, can't have two from no. the same county. No. Oh, okay, okay. Well, that, that's so, an important rule I missed. Yes. Yeah. So that, 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 that narrows down the field big time. And, and and so who does that leave then on your list? Well, that, is that Thorne, Hillenbrand, and George Miller? George Miller right. is, is is Howell not in that because he's in Romney, isn't he? Yep. I or is he a little but, more? But, out but, but I think I think they've changed the the, most, the current senatorial district now. They <laughs> make it change. It is uh, chops off the area where uh, that doesn't include the area that that, that he's in. And gotcha. Turn. But but. It'll be fascinating who who runs, you know, and I'm, I'm not even talking about the Democrat, <laughs> but it obviously won't be an incumbent if it's a Democrat, but, but uh, this is going to be real fascinating, and I'm, you know, I'm just, I'm throwing out, does anybody have any hurting rumors or hurting thoughts? Well, I have, and, and I would say, first of all, when, I'm going to say when Charlie Trump wins, and becomes a, a, a Supreme Court justice, um, his position will be appointed 
So it won't be somebody that runs because he's going to he's going to control that seat all the way up to the point where he's elected as as. Well, a, well, no, no. He, this this his the term's Supreme, not his term's not up for another two years. Oh, okay. That's seat. a bad so, yeah. big deal. Okay, well, so, I'm sorry. So somebody I, will be appointed, but I think okay, I that, think that, you have a good point. Is there may be an appointment from one of those positions. That's hugely important because yes. I, I, for some reason, I just assumed that his Senate term was also... No. Up. Okay. No. Okay. Well, that changes yeah, everything. Yeah, Craig, Craig's up for election. Yeah. He's up in that... Uh, and and, 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 and uh, Jim Justice will still be the governor. But he will be appointing, so it'll yeah, be what he, he... Even though, you know, his term is was about to end at that same time. So would it be the Morgan County Executive Committee? That yes, it was. Or, or was it the Hampshire County Executive well, Committee? Well, it's that combination. Yeah. I don't think the Berkeley County Election Committee would be involved. <coughs> right. Maybe those other three counties. But I think we've confused a lot of who's available what. As I understand it, uh, if uh, Charlie Trump runs and is elected, then then somebody will be appointed in his, in his in, in Senate seat. Correct. If he runs and is not elected, he will continue to serve as a Senate until 2026. Correct. That, that and, would be, that's a yeah. scenario that's not even worth considering. He will be elected. No, hold a second. Hold a second. But I, he's already said he his would. His na last name's Trump, and he's also, well, as an individual, well-respected. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Mike, you're exactly right there. Uh, <laughs> but as our good friend and Rob Mario has pointed out several times, when someone goes to the voting booth, they look at two things. If they don't know the candidate, they don't know him personally, they look at two things. First, they look at the party affiliation. In this case, nonpartisan, so that's off the list. The second thing they look at is the location, the county, and you tend to vote by your county or your or the counties associated with you. So I think all of us will agree that Charlie Trump is a superb, superb candidate and would do a phenomenal job as Supreme Court and that he should be elected. But the fact that they vote, a lot of people vote on ge geography more than anything else, I don't think it's a slam dunk. No, we don't know who, who else is getting in the race yet. Well, that, that's, right. that's a different show. We don't know in either yeah. the Supreme Court or uh, the, the Senate race. I think to advantage that we all have, because we're all supporters of Charles Trump, uh, the advantage is that by conceivably that Charles getting in early would discourage other candidates from getting in. Well, that would be the hope, right? Um, also, don't, don't forget that there's a good possibility that 2024 has Donald Trump at the top of the ticket. So that might actually drag him along uh, pretty well as well. So Good Very point. True. Good point. Yeah. Uh, yeah, a couple of things. I mean, you live there, so. First of all, Daryl Coles is a name we haven't mentioned, and he's on the governor's staff. Yeah. <laughs> and he's going to be needing a job, yeah. uh, among other things, I would think, because the governor can't serve any more terms. And so he would be, he was majority leader in the House, right? I mean, yes, uh, yeah, yes he, he was. was. Yes, yeah, he's he got was. lots of experience. Um, and so he could come along. It would be interesting to see a rematch between him and George Miller um, for that Senate seat. Uh, you know, George. In 2026. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the if the appointment takes place now, the other question I have is this. If I'm Charles Trump, I've at least got to consider resigning my Senate seat. Because I don't want to get to the end of this process, lose by a couple of percentage points, and think, if I hadn't been sitting in the Capitol, if I'd have been running around the state campaigning, I would have got those extra two points and I'd be on the state Supreme I think, Court. I think on the show, Charlie had insinuated that that was the case, that he was he was not going to fulfill. They were gonna, he was going to resign his Senate seat, and he mm. was going to... Run this as a that, full thing. That, that in that case, you, the Daryl Coles numbers yeah. go up. <laughs> but that also puts a totally different perspective on the question that Mike Carl originally asked. Right. The car, uh, Mike's question was, who's going to run until... Charles Trump resigns his seat. Nobody's going to run because it's a it's not an open seat. It's got in starting in twenty from twenty twenty four to twenty twenty six. There it's an occupied seat. Yeah. So nobody can run 
for 2024 unless Charles Trump resigns. No, uh, even if he resigns, nobody can run. It's going to be an appointment. It's going to be an appointment. It'll be an appointment. Yeah, for, for the two years. Uh, well, no, 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 it's like, it, there, there will no be there will no there will be no special election for that seat. They have to wait okay. till okay. it comes. Oh, they won't change the six year okay. rotation so, between him and Blair. Okay, so yeah. nobody's going to run. Nobody will run. Nobody will be running for that until 2026. Okay. Dave, you got any uh, um, perspective on this or? I mean, I could run. I guess I'm in the district, but that. So I won't. So. <laughs> so what? In Morgan County. I, well, no, actually, I can't because I'm in Berkeley County, right. so I couldn't run either. So well, would a, part of it is part of Berkeley County is in this district, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, we yeah. Can't yeah. Have oh, yeah. But, 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 oh, that's I, 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 I forgot yeah. that rule. You so, know, would a prospective yeah. person who wants this position would they go to an executive? Mike, you you sat on an executive committee. Would they put their name forward? Or I, I mean, if how does if, the if I wanted that position, I absolutely would go to the executive committee and ask for a meeting with them and, and absolutely and spell out my my qualifications and why I think I, I could do because they're going to play a very important role in choosing the the three people that they submit to the governor for for consideration and they'll probably say of those three who they would recommend so I would absolutely and that's why it's real important with those executive positions Executive committee committee, positions yeah. where we don't really take them, we take them for granted, I think. <laughs> well, in, this in is when they really become important. <laughs> exactly. And another point, I think it's fairly clear, but to state, restate the obvious, the seat that Charlie Trump, the Supreme Court seat that Charlie Trump will be running for is nonpartisan, but the seat he's vacating is very much partisan, so it had to be a Republican mm -hmm. replacement for him. Here's the other thing I think when you go, when you're talking about a statewide race, um, if you go to an area where somebody is not known that you talked about before, um, a, a lot of times you rely on your your own your own representatives um, to to give you some input. So if Charlie can secure endorsements in those areas of the state, I think that goes a lot of, a long way for him to get elected statewide. Um, and and Charlie is a very very popular individual within the Senate and the House and would have no trouble at all getting endorsements statewide you're from make, representatives. You're making a very good point, but I'd like to expand that a little bit more. You've talked about the legislators, the Senate and the congressmen. However, the same thing extends for the legal community. Charlie is, is held yes. in phenomenal regard. So if I was a voter not knowing anybody, and if I was not going to vote geography, I would do just what you said. I'd go to my local senator, local uh, delegate, or a lawyer that I'm familiar with, and I think in all cases, Charles Trump would receive a statement of great endorsement. I agree. I often Although get. I will, I will say that I I hate the idea of losing Charlie Trump in the Senate just because he's one of the guys that I see as not being one of the the ideologues within the body. He's the guy that really helps the process work and and. Uh, Losing that and not knowing what is going to replace it is uh, knowing that the the um, legislature is is tilting way more right than than it had been in previously. That uh, that is a worry that that we're going to lose a. I wouldn't say exactly a moderating voice, but a much more moderate voice than than uh, what we've seen elected um, recently. But David, at, at the same time, aren't all those qualities that you just said, aren't those what you want in a Supreme Court judge? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I think he's a phenomenal choice for the, for the Supreme Court. Um, I mean, the guy's pretty much written half the laws in the state anyway. <laughs> so, I mean, like, he's going to know exactly what's going on um, and, and his level-headedness. And they, they're all assets. Uh, I'm not saying that I, I, I wouldn't vote for Charlie Trump as a Supreme Court justice. I'm saying that... Um, losing that in the legislature and not knowing what's going to replace it, knowing that the the, the bent of the organ the the uh, body is is tilting much further right than I even I, than than I'm very much comfortable with, then uh, that that's what concerns me. There's one idea that we haven't discussed uh, with regard to Charles Trump's campaign for state supreme court, and that is. Uh, this election, of course, will take place in the primary in May, 
um, of 2024. So it's not going to be the full hullabaloo of a presidential election and all the rest of it. And that tends to narrow the turnout a little bit. But secondly, we don't know whether someone from Charleston, Huntington, or somewhere in between is going to run. We still face the fact that I don't believe that any Eastern Panhandle resident has ever been elected to statewide office um, from the Eastern Panhandle. Did we ever have a governor? Riley. Well, we got Riley. Riley's, Riley's a treasurer. Oh, yeah, okay. I mean, yeah. um, but... Maybe not to the Supreme Court, but... Yeah, not to the state Supreme we, we Court. We have a lot more votes governor, than we yeah. used to have in the, Fact. when those statistics right. were built. Mike, no, wrap but, it up. I, I, I'm really glad I brought this up, and yeah. I, even though it's obvious that I didn't know a lot of the details that related to it. So, but thanks for everybody's input. We set you straight, Bill. Yeah, I left that. Larry made a point that I forgot about. Uh, the judicial elections are done in, Mar in May and not in November. Yep. So regardless, even though it's a nonpartisan, the election will be in May and not November. And I think uh, I think Larry does bring up a good point. The Eastern Panhandle, we, we we don't get a lot of love from Southern West Virginia. So uh, <laughs> if a if a big name does run, it could be closer than we. But think. the fact that it's Trump helps. You know, oh, I, I agree one hundred percent. All right, well, moving on. Possibility. I mean, I don't jump back in here, but um, <laughs> in the Eastern Panhandle, you also have Morrissey. So you could have a, a Eastern Panhandle governor and an Eastern Panhandle uh, Supreme Court mm -hmm. uh, position at the same time. Well, we've got a number of statewide positions that people running for the Eastern Panhandle. Right. So, so. Let's move on to Bill Stubblefield for the second topic. Okay, for the second topic, going something that's been in the news a great deal uh, this past week, and one that I know is going to push my colleague Mike Carl's button, and he's going to get all red in the face and start jumping <laughs> down. Let him answer last. <laughs> so I'm all ready to go. Uh, after five years of investigation by a Trump-appointed investigator, do you believe the charges against Hunter Biden were appropriate? I'm going to go with Dave Valente first. Uh, was, was that plea deal fair? I, no, not really. But do I care? No, not really. Uh, do I think the GOP is going to turn this into a Hillary Clinton-style debacle? Uh, absolutely. I mean, I understand that they're doing it for their base and and all that fun stuff. But uh, the, the one thing that Democrats and Republicans should remember is that your bases are shrinking like the pool water is a little too chilly. So understand that yeah you're you're riling up your bases but you're also driving a lot of out a lot of voters into independence uh from the political parties because they're just tired of what's going on in washington and the you know continued uh, uh investigations of this side or that side depending on who's in control of the house or the senate it's 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 getting a little ridiculous and and um so, yeah, I do think we're going to see more Hunter Biden dealings, um, tax charges and gun charges. I mean, uh, you know, I, as a former libertarian, I, I kind of like the idea of somebody, you know, being a taxes and the, and the gun charges. But, you know, that's that's just me. But, um, yeah, I think after five years that it's kind of disappointing that that was all that was brought Um and you can read into that whatever you want, that uh, whether it was, well, there was a whole lot of smoke but no fire or that there was just nothing there. But, um, yeah, I, I, I'm just kind of over the whole Hunter Biden situation. I, I really don't care about the relatives of our uh, elected officials. Larry? It's very clear that he's got some serious tax problems. Um, and they're going to make him pay the money that he owes. Yeah, right, There's yeah. a shot. He's already paid back. Right. And so um, at that point, I don't think he's getting any kind of a special deal from this Trump appointed prosecutor. He doesn't uh, uh, sound like, no, this David Weiss, I think is his name. He's not like the other guy, Durham. Who couldn't win a single case um, he, he's actually a pretty level-headed thing from the stuff I've heard him say and um, he's a pretty level-headed guy and not a big ideologue but he had every opportunity and 
every incentive to find whatever there was to find about Hunter Biden and to go forward with it. Um, he found what there was to find. And that's it. Yeah, I think people just want equal justice. And you look at things like this tax evasion, not not paying his taxes, and and I, I'm pretty sure that's ex- exactly what they got Roger Stone for. And Roger Stone gets, you know, uh, hauled out of his house early in the morning by an FBI toting um, gunman, and goes to jail for what he did. So when when you look at the two scenarios, you're you're just you just want equal justice. I want Roger Stone to get the same treatment that Hunter Biden got. And I want Hunter Biden to get the same treatment that Roger Stone got. So pick whatever the treatment is. I don't really care. Just give both of them the same thing. I, and I'm, I'm tired of the DOJ playing favorites and, and having different scenarios for different people depending on what their, their ideology is. That's where I come down on all of this. Finally, Mr. Carl. And, and I'm going to play right off of Mike's the last point uh yeah the weiss weiss was appointed by trump but as a u.s attorney and he was subject absolutely to the mercy of the fbi and the doj which has been demonstrated to be politically biased uh against trump and in favor of the democrats and can you say the russia gate deal come on uh so he was at the mercy of that and i you know, being a little cynical, he may have recognized the way, you know, the, those limitations and recognized he wanted to be a U.S. attorney and continue, you know, after Trump was running things. And and so he, 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 he did his best to make favors with the uh, Democratic side of, of the thing, which can... can, can constitute the, the, the Department of Justice underlings, you know, and not the Attorney General under Trump, but the, but the you know, the whole structure and the FBI. Which, so, the, it, it doesn't say any. Where did all that money come from? How did that guy that we know about, so this is not over, and Joe Biden, the big guy in the in the uh, tapes or on, on, on the laptop, uh, you know, there, there's a lot more to come, and, I, and, I, and the Republicans will find out. Bill, to yeah. wrap it up. <laughs> okay. I think what I, the, the, uh, the plea agreement was revolving the uh, tax evasion and, and the guns. Uh, that was very narrowly focused. So we haven't got into the laptop, We have right? not gotten into right. the Ukraine and the like. And, and the question is, will we get into the Ukraine? Uh, because supposedly there are some documents that the... House of Representatives like get access to. They're having difficulty. I don't know if this is a big issue or not. It is a politically large issue, but I'm talking about the Ukraine now. Is a legally large issue or is just an emotional partisan issue? I don't know. And welcome back into Eastern Panhandle Talk. I am joined by the Motley crew, as usual. Uh, it is Friday. Rob is not here. If you're just tuning in, he has taken a much needed day off. Um, I'm presuming since we're talking about Trump, we need to go to Larry Schultz next because <laughs> I believe this will be the first Friday in forever that he won't bring up Trump. Right, Larry? Well, as a matter of fact, <laughs> <laughs> now that Trump's been indicted by the Fed and spent the last week making public statements which are certain to horrify his own lawyers, um, does the panel think that his polls among Republicans will suffer? And um, to, to answer my own question, I do. Well, let's go to Mr. Valente on the phone. Even I though you're not a Republican. I, yeah, I'm not a Republican, but uh, I don't think it's going to affect his polls that greatly. I don't even think a conviction will, will affect his poll numbers that greatly. I and mean, we're still seeing him poll about 50 percent amongst uh, Republicans in, in some polls, uh, even this early, um, that... You know, none of the other candidates are cutting into that lead at all. Um, and, you know, just as he famously said in 2015, he could literally shoot somebody in Times Square and he wouldn't lose support because people have made supporting Trump 
so much of their personality. And I know that you know the varying opinions on the on the panel about Trump himself and not wanting him to the nominee or being the nominee. But in this case, I, you know, I I don't think there's going to be much stopping Donald Trump as the way the way that this race is laying out right now. I think there's going to be much way to stop Trump. Uh, even if he's convicted of, of all charges. Mr. Height, as a Republican, even though you didn't well, support him to start with. First of all, it, when he shot somebody in Times Square, I'm sure it was in self-defense. So <laughs> that, that's why he didn't get charged there. Um, so I, I don't think it would affect him at all. Uh, I'll be honest with you. Uh, the, the people who are behind Trump are behind Trump 100 percent. And I think what he represents a lot of times for people is um, anti-establishment, whether it's Republican or Democrat. He is he is the one person that can go in and just blow up the whole political establishment that everybody hates right now. Um, well, I mean, they've tried to stop him in every single way possible since the day he came down. You're talking about the establishment. Everybody. The Republicans, Democrats, everybody, the establishment, everybody's trying to stop him. And he is a force of nature that has just taken over and he won that election. Right. And and whether you love him or hate him, I mean, I think that's the appeal a lot of times to some people, even those of us who who don't particularly care for the man. um, We do like the fact that he is anti-establishment and um, he, he sort of looks like at the even the Republican establishment and thumbs his nose at them. So, you know, I sort of like that in him, but I just don't like the man. So, Mr. Call. Well, I, I basically agree with what Mike just said, but I think I, I, I think that there's a lot can happen between now and when when these decisions are made. Uh, what do you think that could happen in the Republican Sector that would absolutely, really, you, absolutely. You think it? The, yeah, I, you think I, it could I, change? I, 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 I think not so much uh, losing confidence or you know belief and support of Trump, but gaining support of the other competitors in the in the, on the Republican side. And the more time goes by that they can, you know, dis- and and they'll play different games in terms of how much they sympathize and support Trump, but they're going to talk about issues that people care about, you know, policy issues, not personalities. And and I think over time that there's uh, uh, all kinds of, of good talent. And, you know, the, DeSantis is one of them, but but he's not the only one. And I, th- I think there's, I think over time in the next several months that there'll be uh, Trump's percentage of, you know, the, the poll. Of course, I have no confidence in the polls anyway, but will will diminish, and and there'll be at least one or maybe a couple people that merge, you know, as as prospective uh, you know, nominees. Uh, will anybody come within thirty points of him? Yeah. Oh, you think I, so? I, absolutely. I think I think I think there's no uh, no doubt that six months from now that he will not have a the lead he has. Mr. Stubblefield, you know, or, okay, go ahead, sorry. David. Well, I, one thing to consider is that uh, at some point, this is going to, amongst Trump supporters, his hardcore partisans, is going to be a rescue mission for Trump. That they'll, they, they're going to bargain that the only way to save Trump is to elect him as president, and therefore he'd be able to pardon himself, although I don't think he can do that. But... I think that's the, the bargain that they're going to make eventually. Yeah, this has to be uh, uh, Trump's popularity in the polls has to be the greatest nightmare that the Republican Party can have. Because I think through the primary, Trump is probably going to win. And I disagree with Mike about the polls six months from now. We were saying this six months ago. Last night, I went to the looking at the trends and. And we were saying Trump's going to fade uh, six months ago. Today, he has not faded. He's made his lead even greater. So I think this will continue through the, through the primaries. Then what happens? Then this is where the convictions or the, or the, excuse me, the indictments are going to really take root. Not among so, the lawyers. Right. But the more they indict him, the more 
Republicans like myself will support them. Well, maybe so, but it's also going to be more the independents, which are key that's to this key. whole race. Yes. And the independents are tired of this. The Democrats obviously like the Republicans. They've staked out a position uh, long ago what they're going to do with Trump. But haven't the independents also grown tired of Biden's policies? Well, I mean, it, it's yeah, been you, bad. Well, yeah, Mike, uh, I'm not sure that's right. Okay. Uh, if you look from an independent perspective, you may not like Biden as an individual. Yeah. You may think he's an old man. He, right. he shuffles. He doesn't talk well. But his, his Can he policy, handle four more years? His, well, let me finish, yeah. if I may, please. Yeah. Uh, the policies have been fairly universally accepted by most folks as being good policies, good bipartisans. Now, folks like Mike Carl is going to disagree with that adamantly. Me but too. If, and Mike. Height. But if you look at a lot of the... And anybody with any sense. <laughs> okay. But Who doesn't not, need to have a job? Yeah. yeah. I mean. But <laughs> we're, we're talking about a sector that is not represented around this table well today. And that is the independence. I thought and you were the, an independent. Well, I am. And I and I disagree with my two and colleagues. David is. Yeah. Well, David, David's, David's an independent. independent. Okay. You're an independent. But and yeah. both of us are saying, I think, the same thing. That the policies are not as bad as what the Republicans say say they are. They have been fairly well received uh, uh, by, uh, I think, by Interest rates are up, people, inflation's yeah. up. We're not. Now the inflation, we're, 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 inflation season we're off. Bi Biden's look, polls are down. <laughs> well, his popularity is pretty poor. Though. But that's that's the different story. That's the point I was trying to yeah. make a while ago. He is viewed personally as not particularly likable. Well, I think, and, but thing. I think you have to look at him his the way he's perceived personally and how his policies are perceived yeah. are two different things. And I think when it comes to Trump, here's the big thing. It, I view him, uh, view Biden very much like the Hillary uh, Clinton thing. We got Trump because everybody said, no way we don't like Hillary. And I think Biden's becoming that no way we don't want Biden person. And that's why we're going to get Trump again. Now, I, but, you, Mike, you're, you're living in your own tribal world. Right. There is another world that is that does not like either one of them. Well, and I, that's why I, I get it. coming back to this may oh. be a time for third party. But if you ask the independents uh, if they have a choice, and they've in this case, they will have seen both. In the Hillary case, they had not seen either one. This case, they will have seen both Trump and Biden. Right. And uh, and I'm not sure your your logic is going to carry the well, day. Just, uh, yeah. so you, at, the, at this at this rate, I can't. I mean, the the entire thought of having Trump versus Biden again just uh, makes me sick. I. I <laughs> It's it's depressing to think about. I mean, I, I'm I'm looking at Vermin Supreme as a viable candidate for president at this point, just because I can't bring myself to vote for either one of these guys. I think that wrap it up, Larry. Yeah, I think that one thing we left out uh, in the discussion here that's going to make a difference is Republican women, and I believe. There's a pretty good sized number of them that are angry about Roe v. Wade and about freedom over their own reproductive health and the right to choose, as any of us have, uh, certain uh, things uh, uh, that might save our life. Um, you know, the, you, when you go through and ban abortion like so many of these states did, and you don't have OBGYNs writing the legislation, there is a tendency to put doctors in a bad spot and they'll say, um, you have a pregnancy that could cause you to die, the fetus is going to die, but I'm afraid of this state law that says I go to jail but that if I do something right. about Come it. On. There's a whole oh, it's happening in Texas right now as yep. we speak. Uh, oh, it's it's definitely happening. And there are women who hear this and say, oh, my God. So you're trying to get a two-for topic is yeah. what you're trying to do today. Well, it's just it's just <laughs> part of it. Unfortunately, that's the road that, that the Republican Party well, chose. The Republican Party believes that killing babies is not reproductive health. That's what and with that, we're going to go to the next topic, unless we want to go uh, bring up this whole can of worms. We're going to go David Alente on the phone. All right. Uh, so in the last month, we've seen five additional Republicans announce their run for the presidential nom uh, nomination. And if you're wondering who they were, uh, I'll 
run them down. It's Francis Suarez, who's the mayor of Miami. Chris Christie, the governor of New Jersey. Will Hurd, a former representative, announced yesterday from Texas. Dan Borgum, the governor of North Dakota. And former Vice President Mike Pence. Um, this brings to the number to 13 number of, I'm going to put in air quotes, major candidates in this race, in the GOP race. Um, the, the clown car is about to get as big as it was in 2016 when there were 16 official, you know, major candidates in the race. Um, no singer, and a lot of these guys that are announcing right now are kind of angling in that um, anti-Trump, um, let's organize behind a candidate who can represent the Republican Party, the, the standard Republican values, things like that. Um, it, I guess, you know, as the, the former libertarian, I'll throw the conspiracy in this race. Do you think that some of these candidates are in the race to kind of throw this into, uh, throw this to Trump that, um, by keeping the anti-Trump side divided uh, as long as possible, as we saw in 2016, where no single candidate emerged until it was way too late when, when uh, Ted Cruz was the last guy standing and everyone, you know, the, all the delegates had been passed out at that point. Do you think that there's uh, that some of these guys are in the race just to keep the opposition divided to yes. assist Trump? Yes. Simple answer from height. My call. I, I, I think there's a good possibility of that, but I don't think it's going to have the. In 2016, we didn't have all the track record of Trump that we have now, so I don't think it's going to have the same effect. But I, I, th probably there are some that are trying to make that happen. Bill? Yeah, uh, the candidates that have entered the race, I think all of them are mimicking each other. And they are, what they're trying to do is to get some rec name recognition without taking on Trump, with one exception. That's Chris Christie. Christie has made the point clear there is one lane. Uh, Hutchinson's done this to some degree, but not as vocal and not as effective as Christie. Uh, Christie's saying there's only one lane, not two or three like DeSantis and others have suggested. There's one lane. Trump is blocking that lane. You don't go around Trump. You go through Trump. And that's what Christie is trying to do. It's going to be curious to see, to me, if he gets traction. Uh, he started to get a little bit of traction, but not enough at this point in time to make any appreciable def difference. But, I, but going back to Mike Carl's point earlier, six months down the line, I do not think it's going to be that Trump makes a misstep or DeSantis does something great. It's going to be how effective, how much traction Christie gets. Okay. If we can count on Trump to continue going on Fox News with people like Brett Bayer, he will talk himself into jail and out of this race. I, I, you know, well, it was, it was the COVID uh, press conferences that talked him out of that presidency, essentially, right? He, he ran himself into the into the ground. Um, he he cannot, he cannot do what I can tell you from experience. Um, a car accident victim chosen off the street can do, which is simply wait until you are asked a question about this topic you want well, to speak about him. and say it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> He d he answers questions that weren't asked. Oh, that's Marla. He says, "Ay ay ay." That comment by What's, itself lost the case. Well, you you have to look at. The there are 30 percent of the Republicans that are going to vote for Trump no matter what, which leaves the rest of 70 percent, 70 percent. And the more people you have in the field, the more that are going to split up that 70 percent. So I think when you when you throw a whole bunch of people in the field that that just let now you may be right when it comes to the general. That that all that stuff may hurt him in the general, but in the the Republican primary, the more people that are in this race, and and David, I think you're right. I think some people are, are jumping in the race just to help him. The more people are in the race, or to get a position with him, right? Yes. Right, and that's a possibility yeah. as well. He certainly what's will the, be looking for a VP uh, nominee to run with him. And what's the relationship be like between Lala Mooney and the? Uh, Mayor of Miami. I think that's her nephew. I is think. it her nephew? Is it her nephew? And, and you yeah. know, I know Lala and Alex. They're, they're very close with the Trump campaign. So maybe that's you know maybe he's vying for position well, or vying for the Hispanic split vote. The Florida vote on DeSantis. Yeah, I don't think. Yeah. 
I, I don't think it would be for like a vice president's position because usually when you pick a vice president, you want you're trying to buy a state as well, and I don't think yeah. that I, I think he's already got Florida. So I don't think picking the mayor of Miami as your your running mate really helps him win a state. He needs to look outside of the. And then you look Florida. at a, a candidate like Tim Scott who hasn't gone at Trump like Christie has, who yes. is out there doing stuff, but. What, very what, popular. Yeah, no, hold on. And uh, made up a lot of, made a lot of uh, donations. Got a lot of money. What? But what is Tim Scott taking a position on? Nothing. Tim Scott. Oh, absolutely. What I think are you no, talking about? I, Tim, no. Tim Scott. Tim, but, Tim uh, Scott. No. He takes a position Come on, on Bill. things I care about. Yeah. And there's a lot of them. I think Tim, he's actually Tim's one of the got, better candidates. Absolutely. He, he's, yeah. he's very likable. Very, very popular. He's but done he's a not great job. A position. He has taken a position on race in America. He's done stuff while in the Senate. I think he's one of the more effective legislators. And he's, if it wasn't for popular. Trump, he's and, very popular. Um, he would be a standout candidate. It, it, Mike, he he has taken a position on the most important things that in, in that, that certainly that I care about in America is 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 the fact <coughs> that the Republicans have ones that led the the free not just free enterprise but f free racial freedom and 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 he, I know you you'd like to deny that. Uh, Bill, but 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 that is the truth, and that's wh that's what he personifies, and that's why he's got a shot. You think he has a shot at the nomination? If yeah, you know, even with Trump in there, yes. Is yeah. that is that well, the candidate you were talking now, about? Now, now Trump, Trump. Well, uh, DeSantis, you know, certainly is is, is serious. But so who would you pick? But Nikki, those two? Nikki Haley's not. You know, I mean, she's got a good background, and, and right. Trump, you know, you gave her important position. So tell me about for vice president. I'm talking about for as a Republican, yeah. as a the Republican yeah. candidate early now. Who would you pick if you can't pick Trump? I, 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 well, I'd have to pick DeSantis because he's he has you know he he proved at, at an election in one of the largest states in America on a landslide how how well received he is as a as a politician. So right. I, I I I'd have to pick him, but that, I'm not saying you know I think there's some other possibilities. Height as a Republican, I, probably who would you I, pick? if if I had to do it right now, I'd probably go with Tim Scott yeah. because I look at somebody that has to be able to beat Biden, and I can he see him. I what you, whether you like it or not, he's going to pull a lot of the the African American vote away from Joe Biden um, just because uh, he's an African American. So he would he would definitely be a viable candidate in the general election. You want to wrap it up, David? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm just uh, when we talk about Tim Scott and Nikki Haley, those are those are your safe choices as a Republican. They're not overly inspiring. Like I, I know that Mike has has personal feelings for for Tim Scott. I really couldn't identify much of his positions um, uh, off the top of my head. Um, but, uh, yeah, th as long as we have uh, 13 candidates in the race, and uh, really as long as we have more than, I would say, three candidates in this race, uh, Donald Trump's going to win this nomination just because of the triangulation and, and being able to play. Uh, he's a ma master manipulator. He can play the other candidates off of each other and really just little candidates. We saw him do it in 2016. Uh, didn't have to do it in 2020 because he cleared the road for himself. But uh, he's going to have this advantage just because of the sheer volume of candidates. And we haven't even talked about Glenn Youngkin jumping, jumping in the race or maybe Greg Abbott uh, or Brian Kemp or Christy Nome. Uh, maybe Rick Perry takes another kick at the can. I mean, this is, uh, is going to get to be even busier as we move along. It, it, any American who believes that we have a crime problem and believes that we need to support our local police loves Tim Scott. Good point. Well, everybody I, loves Tim Scott. Everybody. But I'm not sure people are going to vote for Tim Scott. They would if there was nobody else in the. Thing. Well, yeah, but, that's a but, lot of it. But here, here's the thing. Help. Yeah, I'd yeah. win if there's no one running. Yeah. 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 <laughs> But I, I disagree with Bill on this Chris Christie thing because I just see him as you know just complete buffoon I think he's out the one, there. He's the one guy doing it. He's, he, he's, he's the do, one guy. He's not being effective too. at all. He well, is not 
He's tried to go at Trump. Have, have you, and Trump's, it just bounces off. Have you watched have you, have you watched any of the town hall meetings with Chris Christie? With where? On yeah. CNN? Yeah. No. Okay. Then you then you're limited in what you can say. Why? Uh, until you've actually watched it's a Republican in primary. No Republican is watching a town hall with Chris Christie on CNN. Well, he, he, I agree. He, well, he, okay, he is but, going down the but, path. He's trying to play up this to independents, to, to the CNN viewers. But, it is not going to affect the Republican primary. But, no. but, Mike, you're trying to stereotype everybody like you because you, you, you're not going to watch CNN. I you're do watch CNN, little, but well, I'm not going to tune in for a town hall only. on Chris Christie. But, but everybody else. But he's not the only one. There's been four or five of them. Have you watched any of those? I have watched it, a few of them. Chris, okay. Chris, Christie Chris Christie lost the respect of Republicans a long time ago. Yeah. Republicans are not going to vote for Chris Christie. I don't they're, care what they're he not going to listen to him. They're not going to. Mike's right. I, I just I don't see him. He could come on and say whatever he wants, but he will not get more than one percent if if he voted. He won't even make it to the primary. I think he's there to try and go at Trump, but it's just blowing off him. I think the Santos and, and Scott and some of the other ones who are talking policy, they can. They can get there. Well, Christie might be there to take errors for somebody like DeSantis mm -hmm. and stuff. That so uh, that he can he yep. you have somebody that can go at Trump and and save some of the real candidates from from yeah. taking the hits. Well, the one way that I try to get a feel, or I do get a feel from all these candidates, are with the information available that they present firsthand. I've tried to watch every one of the CNN town hall meetings. And they may be on a network you don't like, but it's providing a form, an opportunity to watch and see. Right. If you do not do that, then you're getting information that's been but third party or being generated totally or being manipulated. And, uh, and so that's why, uh, uh, Mike, I don't think you can dismiss too casually. I think when you look at the ratings of CNN, they're, 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 they're in the toilet, right? So there's not a lot of people like you, Bill, that are watching. And it's the people like you are not the ones who get to vote in the primary. Oh, yeah. So, well, in West Virginia. In West Virginia, you do. <laughs> I know. I get it. But by the, time it, the, by the time the presidential primary gets to us, it's decided already. We're, we don't get a choice. I mean. Yeah, you're right. You're exactly right. We'll, we'll be going with. And that's why. Again, I come back to Tim Scott being, he's one of those early states, right? Yep. He could, if he does really well, start making moves. And that's where you saw Biden was, he lost, what, the first two primaries? Mm -hmm. Once it's you start getting momentum. That Tim Scott is in the unfortunate position of having to split votes in his own state with uh, Nikki Haley. That's true. Um, you know, those are two candidates who are both uh, <laughs> liked by a certain percentage of voters. Very and likely. if they could put that into one, that would be a more powerful thing, but it's being split. That's a great point. Um, but one of the things that I think may come into play, and we're going back to Tim Scott, is his popularity among the senators, among his co-senators. His popularity is sky high among his fellow both Democrat and Republican senators. That's In the way he worked well. with them? Yeah. He is, he's generally a nice guy, and he, he gives the impression that he wants to bring everybody together. All, all credit to him. As a substantive issue, unlike Mike Carl, I've not heard him yet. But it's probably there. I've just, I've just you see, you haven't watched the town hall with Tim Scott. You haven't attended the Berkeley County Republican dinner with Tim Scott. <laughs> <laughs> That's your problem, Bill. There is a there is a room. And we only got like a minute, so there is a room. I think Alonzo is trying to get Tim Scott to come up to uh, Berkeley County. I think that would be a phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, you know, hey, yes, all sure. the Republicans to, yeah. to hear that, but anybody to, to hear yeah. Tim. Yes. All right, we're gonna wrap this up. Or I'm joined uh, by my co-host Mike Height. Mike Carl, Bill Stubblefield, Larry Schultz, and on the phone is Dave Valente. Uh, we're going to move right along. Mike Height, you're up. All right. So we're going to bring it back down to, like, state level here. And um, we had uh, the the mayor of Huntington on the other day here. So my question is, if, if the centrist Democrat mayor of Huntington, uh, Steve Williams, gets in the race for governor, can he win in a red state like West Virginia? David Lente. Um, I think in a presidential year, uh, I, I severely doubt it. Um, and it's not unprecedented that a uh, member of one party 
uh, can win in a state that has, uh, you know, a heavily partisan of the other party. I mean, we just saw it in Maryland with uh, Larry Hogan. We've seen it in Massachusetts with, uh, uh, I can't remember his name, Davy Davis. Anyway, um, but and George Pataki in New York. So, I mean, there, there's precedent for, uh, you know, the the there being an opposite party governor of uh, that can galvanize enough support. Um, but with it being a presidential election, I just don't see that there is whoever's at the top of the ticket is going to sway the election towards the, the Republican nominee. Um, but eventually, I mean, as far as the, you know, the Republican Party is moving much farther to the right, they're going to see that central point to the Democrats. There is a point at which you're going to get diminishing returns and and you could end up seeing a a conservative democrat um that that can articulate uh why voting for a democrat makes sense versus a republican could make some inroads here in in west virginia um i think he's probably the most compelling candidate that democrats have at this point and um we'll be interested to see if he can galvanize the support of the the left in the primaries to be able to win that nomination, uh, to get that head up matchup with a, uh, with a further right Republican, say like pa- Patrick Morrissey. And to the resident Democrat. Yeah, I agree with, um, pretty much everything David said. I don't know mayor Williams, uh, very well. I do know that if he has had success, actual success as the chief administrator of that troubled city (laughs) he's going to have quite something to run on because four or five years ago Huntington was starting to creep up um, I think even in some national statistical things. He's made inroads. Drug abuse and, and all the sort of breakdowns that go with it. If he's helped to fix that, that could make a platform for a very strong message of here's what the government can and should do to help uh, the people who are broken down in this state. And let's face it, um, you've heard me say this before, our foster care numbers alone suggest that we have quite a burden um, in terms of just the breakdown of family um, strength in this in this state. If this is a person who can show that he's the, he's the man who can fix it, uh, then he may have a decent shot. Uh, Bill? Yeah, he has two things going against him, one of which we just mentioned, a, a very much of a red state now. But there's been exceptions. Uh, Justice won as a Democrat in a red state. And there have been other examples as well through our history. Uh, so, yeah, it's going to be uh, an uphill battle. But there's another thing he's got working against him, and that is the very respected field of Republicans. We have five candidates that have high name recognition, and and one of those are going to emerge. So they're going to come out with with name recognition and a lot of respect. So if he was running against uh, a uh, a time when we had kind of lukewarm, benign sort of Republican candidates, he might have an advantage. This is not the case. He's running against, he'll be running against one of a very good field of Republican candidates. Michael. Well, I, I agree with virtually everything I've just heard. I think he, but I want to make a little more uh, emphasis. I think his chances are nil in West Virginia in this, you know, coming election. Um, he, he, he may have some, you know, as Mike said, some good you know, policy arguments and you know, experience arguments to make, but uh, they, they won't matter. I mean, he, he's, he, he's going to lose because it is in the body of a national election, and, and uh, I, I just don't think there's a chance. That he- what, if, what if the Democratic Party injects a bunch of money in for him? Does that affect your, your thoughts on that, Mike? <clears throat> there's, uh, no. Uh, I mean, you know, it, it's all a matter of degree, but there's not so enough money yeah. to change the, the— And will they? Because of that, I, I, no. th- I, I, th- I think they yeah. they won't they won't waste their money on yeah. this race. There's going to be yeah, there's going to be another race potentially where they will invest, and that's going to be the mansion 
Justice or a Mooney race, one of those two. If Manchin enters into that race, every Democratic dollar they can find right. will go to that race. Because the Senate's more important to them. Well, and it's a better chance of winning. Right. Uh, uh, the, Dem oh. the Democrats are not mm -hmm. going to invest in what they consider to be a lost cause. Right. Exactly. Also, factor in the um, what happens if you know Trump is the nominee, and then you know. People flee from the from from the Trump side and and are kind of holding their nose for Biden, but uh, if if it becomes very apparent that the that Trump is going to lose and lose badly, does that depress Republican turnout, especially in states like this where we you know we we may go to to vote for governor, but you know the. Uh, knowing that the presidential uh, election, a lot of people are just so invested in the presidential election, they may not show up for uh, if if Trump is going to get demolished. Uh, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to agree with Bill. I think Steve Williams is a quality candidate on the Democratic side, but I think it's because the Republican has so many quality yeah. candidates yeah. this time around that that he's not going to be able to overcome all of that and the quality of candidate there is on a Republican ticket this time. Yeah. And and also the amount of money going in. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the uh, Republicans are going to be scraping dollars to support that race. Republicans are going to have all the money they want in there. So, so uh, as a follow-up to, to Mike's question, I'll, I'll, I'll have a question for the panel. Uh, we're talking about the quality candidates of the Republican governor um, nominees. What are your thoughts on how this race plays out and who eventually comes out on top like I well I, and, I, and how I, does it play out with endorsements from justice and, and things like that I, I think what I think how it comes out is I think Morrissey comes out on top I think he's got the name recognition um, he's got a platform to run on he's going to have a lot of backing and money behind him um, However, I think all of these candidates are exceptional. I, you know, I've gotten to know more Capito. I think that he is an exceptional um, leader. Um, Mac has, has done a lot of good things for the state, and I think he's a great leader. Um, you're going to have somebody like uh, Chris Miller who's going to have a ton of money plus his, his his mother's endorsement behind him in the south part of the state and, and will garner a lot of votes. This is going to be a, a huge race and there's going to split a lot of vote. I just think that because the majority of them are in the southern part of the state and Morrissey is in the upper half of the state, then Morrissey is going to carry the day and, and come out with the most votes. So so by the end of the year, you'll know kind of who has raised the most. Do you think maybe some uh, like like a Mac or JB, they go back into their positions? Because they got great jobs. They've been doing a good job. Do they run for their current positions? Well, no, they, they can't. They, they, cannot, they cannot. They have to give the seat up. They've already given the seat No, no. If, if they... if. They've already given their seats up? No, they have not yet. Yeah. But, uh, but they but will. They, they can declare, make their, yeah. they can change their mind before the end of the year, correct, Mike? Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Year. yeah. Before yeah. the end of this year. So you could see somebody, let's say, and I'm not, I think they're all great candidates too, but somebody maybe hasn't raised a lot of money. You know, yeah. 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 Somebody yeah. like JB could go say, all right. JB no, or this, Mac. This doesn't look good. I'm going to go back. This and doesn't look like I'm going to win. I'm going to yeah. just run for my current seat. I, I think that's very likely to happen, actually. And who do you think does that? Think I think JB particularly. Okay. Bill? Well, okay. Uh, JB may do that, but you asked earlier about the best candidates you thought. Yeah. And I agree with Mike Height. I think Marcy is going to win the nomination. But I think the best candidate, the best one that would do the best job, is JB Mikulski. JB has done more to turn in that office around than any of his predecessors have. Uh, he's also the only one that is, at least on this show, that has come up with a substantive platform. All the the others have developed in the, what I consider the cultural issues and not the infrastructure issues. But I don't think you win. The, 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 the uh, uh, Patrick Morrissey's West Virginia VEPA success is not a, a cultural issue. It, it's a fundamental but, issue. But and, 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 and I, you know, even J.B. McCuskey, I've known him, you know, since he was a kid and, and you know, would support him and have, but, but uh, uh, the, the Morrissey 
He does have a track record. He, he, he does have a track record. He has a track He's record done. on things that matter. Don't just right. talk about social issues. But if you, well, on the on this I mean, show, Bill, yeah, all Bill's I'm talking in, about is the platform and the right. platform and yeah. the, what he's presented on the show, Mike. And they have not presented substantive infrastructure issues on the show. Now they they may have done great things in the office, but they're not highlighting this. And I think Mac Warner is a personal example. Mac has done wonderful things, Secretary of State. But he's been on this show. He has not highlighted a single thing. He's gone back to cultural issues. They, they're just running. They're, they're playing politics. But the, what they did in office is what matters. Yeah, I'm a they're, big fan. As a uh, very brief time uh, between college and law school, I was an auditor. I'm a big fan. I of thought auditors. you were going to say you were a Republican. They're, they're, no, <laughs> <laughs> I was about to it, follow up. I never chair. was that desperate. <laughs> Uh, but uh, uh, I think auditors are critical thinkers, and I like the idea of a critical thinker being the governor of our state for once. Um, so that would be interesting to see. All right, somebody's phone's ringing. Where are we getting the music from? <laughs> I, I don't know where that's coming from. <laughs> Colin, we need help. We got unwanted music. Um, okay. So we're going to move on to topic number two for Bill Stubblefield. Watch it right here, the vice president presiding over the Senate. <laughs> I think we've answered that question. We've been hacked, folks. Yeah. But thanks to the swift efforts of U.S. Capitol Police, mm -hmm. federal, state, and local law enforcement. Bill, go with our second. Tell you what, let's go, go to commercial and we'll fix this and come back. And welcome back to Eastern Panel Talk. We had a uh, rendition of January 6th playing there. We all thought it was Larry, because he must have that, like, on replay on his screen. But it was the what's, Admiral. What's the subject? What's your subject? <laughs> the Admiral had a video playing right into his microphone, and yeah. we didn't realize. I'd so. gone, so, gone for research on my iPad, yeah. but it, it picked up to one of the network news. My, my, my apologies. <laughs> So Good we're going to go right into it, here, Bill. Right. You're going to you've got the second to, your second topic okay. for discussion. Yeah, uh, I've been very intrigued about the third party possibility because we've said already on the show a couple of times today how we none of us really like the the potential candidates, probable candidates, except both the Democrat and Republican, except for maybe Mike Hornby. Yeah. Uh, so I think a lot of folks are looking for a relief, a third party, except. The mainline Democrats, not the mainline, the uh, uh, the progressive side of the Democratic Party, they're absolutely petrified of a third party because they think it's going to be handed to Trump. And they may be right, but they're the only ones who are prepared to go to, uh, go to court to prevent the third party being registered in various states. So my guess, my point is, are they justified in their fear? Mike Height. Yes, yes, they are. There, because I think if there is a third party, it's going to come out of the the left side of the camp. Um, it's going to be a, a a person like Manchin that would would uh, carry that banner, and that would absolutely pull centrist Democrats. Um, away from the party, and they need every vote they can get. But the argument, third party, is they would pull an equal number of centrist Republicans. But but more centrist um, Democrats. Yeah. Yeah. Mike Call? I, I think I agree pretty much with Mike Heitz's view. I, th I think it would hurt the Democrats more than the Republicans. But, but you know, it depends on who the, you know, the, the angle or what, 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 you know, where they, the third party person emerges from and and uh, but I, uh, it, it would hurt the democrats definitely more than the republicans mr valente well as a former third party person i would say that in having talked to at least three of the the candidates that are running on the, the um two of libertarians and one that has not decided their political party yet um that I, it depends on, on who uh, who comes out. Now, there's always been the talk that you know if Trump doesn't win the nomination, does he does he go third party um, to to run in the election? Then then all bets are off. I mean, I think that really just seals the election for Biden. Um, so it really depends on who jumps in, 
who emerges out of the third party candidates. There are people, once the conventions for the Greens and the Libertarians happen, are going to be looking. But David, none of those, uh, especially none of those people are actually viable candidates. It's more of this no name party. I think Bill's talking about yeah. right that yeah. a new coalition, if you will, and and not yeah, there's, there's not personality parties. driven. Yeah. Well, there there are coalition parties, uh, and yeah, they're they're uh, the Democrats are fighting to keep the no labels group off of the ballot in Arizona because they think it's going to flip that Senate seat. Um, but uh, I I I think that really when when it comes down to the third party, they're going to get there really isn't going to be a movement that gets them in there though. The everything is right now is so rigged just for the Democrats or Republicans. The, the, the only way a candidate becomes viable is if they get in the debates and get more national exposure. Um, and uh, third parties spend so much, of, so much of their resources just getting on the ballot in these states. And you're talking about these ballot challenges that the Democrats are doing. Republicans have done the same thing in, in other states uh, to keep off you know, libertarians. They, they've been working hard in Texas to do that. Um, it's it, it really depends on who emerges from those third parties and if they can, or from the third party candidates, if they can get in the debates. And those polls are so rigged that they don't even ask about third party candidates at all. So um, really, they're, they're, they're going to be shut out of the debates no matter what. So it doesn't really matter who gets put up by what organization. Uh, we're just going to get force fed Biden versus Trump or you know, by some miracle, the the Republicans nominate somebody else, then we might see Trump run as a third party candidate, although he faces sore loser laws in a lot of jurisdictions. Um, I think that it would be interesting if the no labels party ran, because I believe if he loses the nomination, like David said, um, that Donald Trump will, but he won't run as well. So, uh, well, I'm not so sure about that. We there are still some <laughs> prosecutors who have a few things to say about that, and and there are people in the Republican Party, whether the listeners believe this or not, who, if he is convicted of a felony, will say. Okay, he's not suitable to be president of the United States. He'll still win and, the and so, uh, but there are enough people who would say that if they then pick a different nominee and Trump runs as a fourth party candidate <laughs> alongside the no oh, labels no. person, <laughs> then you're back to status quo. So, and uh, but Trump will take a lot of Republicans with him. If he goes. So this so, is the Larry Dream scenario. Yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> it's the, actually the, a nightmare scenario because probably the no labels guy will be Joe Manchin. No, I I, um, I believe Joe Manchin is, is a Democrat and always will run as a Democrat. If you're going to see a challenger to, to Biden, I think Joe Manchin is the one who does it on the Democratic ticket. I don't think he goes on a no no parties platform. I don't think he he has always solidly said, I am a Democrat. I'm a West Virginia Democrat. Um, it, but but, but the, the policy positions he's taken, that for which he's gotten a lot of credit from a lot of people, yeah. are not Democratic positions. Well, he and took a lot of credit for the pipeline, right? Well, but, it, it, but but he 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 has he has gained a lot of support by being opposed to the current Democratic leadership. But I think that's what the independents like, and I think oh, yeah. you know, the moderate Democrat, the, the the bill independent, that person likes somebody who can reach across the aisle and work with somebody, work with with some. I think. I mean, every time you make a vote, I think it matters in Congress. Yeah. And I think every time he has made a vote, it's with an indication, where am I running? And recent votes lead me to believe he is trying to stay in the Senate, that yeah. those votes were West Virginia votes. They were not necessarily uh, national votes. Um, and I thought early on that he may buy for a, a presidential run. Um, I don't think so now, just because of the recent votes he's had in Congress. I think he's going to try to stay in, uh, in the st Senate seat that he's currently in right now. Um, however, so if there isn't a, a, a third party um, in the scenario that Larry lays out is that um, Trump 
doesn't win and runs as a third party because he doesn't win. That you, you are absolutely. That's a dream scenario for a Democrat because be, you're absolutely right. It hands the presidency to a Democrat and maybe the House and the Senate too, I, possibly. I mean, but that's why I call it a dream scenario. <laughs> well, a dream scenario for Larry. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Total That'll nightmare a for Republicans. Complete nightmare for all, all, all conservatives. Just a different yeah. kind of dream. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, Martin Luther King said, I have a dream. He didn't say, uh, I have a dream and it's not a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But what, what I find interesting about the third party is that they're doing all their, a lot of the uh, research up front. They're not going to commit to f even finding a candidate or supporting the candidate or even trying to go forward unless come around the first of the year they see a viable pathway to the uh, to winning the election where does the money come from Bill? well they have I mean they have quite we're, a bit we're talking well, yeah, they they'll need, yeah, I do, they have money, but you're yeah. right. Running the presidential campaign is a tremendous amount. Especially I, against I, the two parties. Yeah, I don't know their, their full funding source, but yeah. I know at this point in time. But to me, the money is not the critical issue as the fact that taking a very deliberative approach and not making a decision at this point in time, either one, are they going to field a candidate, or two, who that candidate may be. See, I think the money is what you follow. That's how you gauge how much support you have it's not always the packs but it does money is one of the most important things in a in a uh, uh, one of these national especially the national Un uh, un races. Unquestionably, you're right, yeah. Mike. But w around this table, we've said a dozen times how much we are looking for an alternative to Biden and to Trump. We say that every time we get together on Friday. We're saying well, that's been mimicked or to, uh, repeated by thousands and thousands and thousands of other folks that are looking for an the alternative. Regular folks and these come up. I'm sorry, do what? Do you think regular folks are looking for an alternative? Absolutely. The regular voter? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I think there's a lot of, of merit to that. You're yeah. absolutely right. Nobody wants to see a, a Trump-Biden ticket uh, race again. So is, is there an appetite for a third party? Yes. But I've always said it has to be a very, very popular name, a very well-known name to make it really viable. If you, had, if you told me a Mark Cuban, Elon Musk ticket was coming out of the third party, I'd say, oh, oh, crap. And, 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 and Mike, they, that type of name may be the one coming out. We don't know at the state. Well, nobody nobody knows. Saying, oh, crap. Yeah, that's nobody the only knows. kind of well, person. Elon can. We have recent evidence. Elon, Elon can run as VP. We, mm, you could be no, VP yeah, and, yeah. and not be a naturally born citizen. No. Oh, I'm asking, to, uh, if the president died, what would you, what president? Would you do? Because he can't yeah. be president. Right, he can't be president. The whole idea yeah, of a vice president, president is he's the, the heir. Yeah, and but the they spare, never talk about know. the VP uh, uh, candidates and the qualifications. So we, we probably need to look into that. All right, so let's let's him I might, I might run for VP there. Much so. But if we need evidence about where money would come from, there was a billionaire on the submarine Titan that went down the other day. There were a couple of them. Billionaires have lots of money, and they'll use it for almost any kind of crazy scheme. Um, this guy risked his life and lost it. And, you know, it's really a tragic thing. But I thought, that thing, it didn't look very big. It didn't look very sturdy. And, uh, you know... What are, we, are we changing subjects? Or are we yeah, no. talking about, we're talking about billionaires and what they do with their money. Well, I mean, a billionaire can't doesn't... I get, you know... One person can't affect those national races. We're, we're talking about hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars coming in. Um, uh, you know, what's Mike? What's Donald Trump's war chest right now? It, it's it's getting bigger. Yeah, and, it, 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 and the it, more it, they indict him, the bigger it gets. Yeah, it, but, it, it's in the nine. Ten figures. But yeah. here's the thing. Billionaires know other billionaires who know billionaires with money who are willing to donate their money. So it's it's a whole lot easier for billionaires to raise money. What's the what's the max you can uh, make on a personal uh, level to a presidential campaign? On uh, packs, you can I mean, give a lot of money. So you can give the pack as much yeah, as you yeah, want. The pack, pack as much as you can support unlimited. them. Unlimited. But we're talking, you're looking at 
Trump, he's actually raised that money him for yeah, himself. But, Mike, we're, we're, everybody knows Trump has a big uh, war chest. Yeah. But the question you ask, is there a vehicle, avenue to get money? And Mike Height and I yeah. are on the same court. Yes, there is. Has it been tapped into yet? No. Would it be tapped into if the no parties gets a very high visible, a highly popular candidate? The answer is yes. Well, I'd be much more appreciative of the no parties if they started spending money at WLNR and then I'd get a chance. <laughs> but, yeah, so, so, so I, Dave, we're gonna, I'm going to cut you off there. We're going to take a break sure. with the 930 hour. We'll come back with our last half hour. Um, you are listening to Eastern Pan Am Talk without Rob Mario. Welcome back to Eastern Pan Am Talk without Rob Mario. We are in our last segment. Um, or last half hour, should I say, not last segment, the last half hour. Uh, Rob's on vacation. Um, we're going to go straight into it. Mike and Larry both had the same um, text or comment or topic to, to come up with. The, was it accusations of plagiarization and things going on in the text chain? <laughs> but Larry, why don't you give us the next topic for discussion? Okay. Why don't the West Virginia voters supporting Governor Justice in the polls for the 2024 race for the U.S. Senate seem to be bothered by his obvious dishonesty and financial corruption? Um, it's a loaded question. So, so round the table, how many of you have been polled in the Eastern Bend? Any, anybody been polled on the governor's race? Bill? I have, yes. You have been polled. Dave? Nope. Nope. Okay. So one out of five essentially. Bill, start yeah. with you. Okay, I think the, it's a good question, Larry, but I think the answer is that people are less concerned about <laughs> their honesty and their financial investment. We see this on Trump, we see it with justice, as they are with what I, Alleged. what is the populist <laughs> label. People are so tired of the so-called elitist, and anyone that's going to take the elitist on, which the populists are, Trump did it as a populist, Justice has done it as a populist. I think this, this overrides any other consideration, and both Trump and Justice appear to be taking on the so-called swamp, wherever the swamp may be, at the federal level or the local level. Mike? Yeah, I, I think it's a good question, Mike. Thank you. Um, <laughs> thank, thank you for recognizing the source of the question as opposed to the I love the partisanship going on here. It's a good question. Copy and paste. <laughs> so I, I, I think that I, there are people like me that it does bother. And I am bothered by the fact that he has, has not paid his taxes and he has all these fines and things. Um, but I think with justice in particular, he, he relates to the the regular average Joe in West Virginia very, very well. That that folksy type attitude that he has when he talks at, at a town hall or, you know, on the radio or whatever, he just relates to people. And I think a lot of them tend to overlook that because he he comes down to their level and he and they feel like he knows them and is part of them. He's He's that West Virginia guy. So I think they overlook that. People like me, I don't. I, I, that irritates the heck out of me. You got all that money. You can't pay your taxes. Yet yeah, you, you would throw me in jail if I didn't pay my taxes. So, yeah, I'm irritated about it. But that's kind of under the guise of populist. populist. Yes, I, you're absolutely right. David? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's interesting. Yeah, I think a lot of uh, Trump voters overlap, the, like the Venn diagram of... Uh, Trump voters and justice voters is probably just a single circle. Um, uh, they, to me, I don't, I don't know, know if I agree with that. <laughs> I, it's, it's a lot of overlap. I mean, as as far as what's happened in the last few years since he's become a Republican, um, but for and to me, it's odd because it's really faux populism and and the fact that. Both of these guys have lived probably some of the most privileged upbringings uh, of anybody in, in the state of West Virginia. Um, you couldn't compare Trump's upbringing to anybody in the state of West Virginia and, and justice uh, just as much. But they both know how to sell, and they, they're selling it as they are just regular dudes. And, uh, you know, I think that's a lot of the reason why people are willing to overlook it. We're willing to overlook it for Trump. 
we're going to be willing to overlook it for justice, at least within the, the Republican primary. Um, uh, you know, if, if Trump wins the nomination, I, I, I give him a very good oppor- or very good chance of defeating Manchin just based on the demographics of the state and the, the fact that it is a presidential election year. And I think coattails will help him just as they did in 2020 when he was running for governor. Uh, you know, his resounding victory there, I think, was definitely helped by uh, by Donald Trump's presence on the ticket. But, um, yeah, the... Well, well, David, who, the who gets the endorsement from Trump between Justice and Mooney? Uh, I think Trump, I think Justice gets, gets the endorsement. I think that I don't know about that. Um, I, you know, I, yeah, Law is very persuasive, but I think I think Trump uh, Trump can't stay out of stuff. I mean, we we know this. Well, they're I mean, both going to be clamoring at his door, banging it down to say, "I want your endorsement." Yeah, but I, I think... Especially here in West point, Virginia. I think, I think Trump is, is going to go with the guy that that has the larger re- name recognition within the state just to ensure that he gets the win in the primary uh, over Alex Mooney. Michael? Well, I, I think it's a perverse... The, the, you know, the reason for his continued popularity is, is a perverse combination of ignorance... People that just don't understand the implications of, of you know, all this proven corruption on, on the part of, of justice. And proven corruption? Right. Oh, absolutely. Okay. okay. I, I mean, I, I don't mean, you know, vote buying, but I yeah. mean not paying your bills and lying and, you know, not paying your taxes for decades. It didn't just start when he became governor. But but it, it's, it's a combination of, of not you know, really understanding the implications of that for, you know, a, a major political leader and active, uh, sophisticated uh, cynicism that that's true, you know, believing that you're not going to get a politician who doesn't, who, who pays these bills and these taxes, you know, and it's, it's extreme cynicism. So I think it's an interesting combination of those two factors. And we all presume justice is, is going, but I, I, I still think there's a whole campaign to come. And, I, and, you know, Alex has proven time and time again he is one heck of a campaigner. And when those ads start, because he has backing and he has uh, wait, wait, he has the, the PAC money coming, um, I think it could change that. Well, and, and you're, you're, you're right about Trump having a tough call to make. Yeah. You know, if he, he makes book. it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Alex has been a staunch supporter, supporter. Well, and, and, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, so. and, and Alex Alex will highlight all of the faults that Justice has. There won't the be a person in West Virginia that doesn't know yes. every single fault. Yeah, that, that, yeah that, that's, that's, Mo- the, the that's, that's Moody's biggest thing. job is to point that stuff yeah. out. Your martial baseball, the tax evasion, yeah. the, the corruption. And it can come from You'll both hear. sides. It can come from absolutely. the Democrats. It can come from the Republicans. It can come from the House, the Senate. Third. But, well, Alex has a few of his own problems in terms of financial well the little things but, but it's, it's, mi- it's, I mean, it, it's minorly compared yeah, it to is. justice I, I think that yeah. race is going to be really interesting you, you must you as a radio owner must be salivating at the prospects <laughs> I, uh, I i love the idea of that race being so important it, the eastern panel is extremely important to justice um because he can i don't think he can uh if he doesn't concentrate some efforts here um, he's 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 gonna have a real issue. Well, um, uh, and uh, a- Alex will concentrate here as well as Dana Charlson. As an initial matter, I'll tell you. As I uh, don't have to tell my criminal lawyer friends, get your money up front. Right? Oh, we always do. <laughs> it's don't ever be sending them a bill. <laughs> yeah, no, there's right? no there's but no bills in it. In <laughs> you, you know, I grew up in the seventies. Uh, being told uh, from then until this moment that the Republican Party was the party of law and order. But never, I don't think it probably in the history of West Virginia, has there been a situation lined up where you'll have a guy like Trump and a guy like Justice running for national leader. And Justice was a Democrat. Who are, right? But he's a Republican now. And you got to wonder... Uh, maybe he thought his chances of avoiding paying those taxes got a little better. Well, that, sh- that, that shift of parties just shows how uh, uh, fragile is, is his integrity. 
Right. And the the problem is, I used to be told that it was the party of law and order. And now, when I look for somebody who's not following the rules... But you said got on Trump this show Johnson. two weeks ago, we don't have a platform. And now you're telling our platform is law and order. Well, <laughs> no, your platform <laughs> used to be law and order. I don't think any Republican <laughs> leaders are out there talking about law and order. With guys Absolutely. Like we're talking Trump. about crime. We're yeah, talking, talking about, about crime him. in the streets, yeah. in the Democratic cities. Well, there's <laughs> crime in the hotels, too, as Mr. Trump <laughs> could probably tell you. And maybe we should do something that, about that while we're at it. Another Russian crime the, the, the Democrat uh, platform uh, has never been about law and order. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, moving on. Mr. Stubblefield, do you have another topic for us? Uh, yeah, uh, we, talk, we kind of alluded to it earlier. Who's going to be, if Trump's the nominee, which we all think he probably will be, who's is going to be his vice president pick to run with him? All right, let's start with David on the phone. Uh, I'm looking at a ideological face of Christy Nome from South Dakota. Interesting pick. What is she famous for, Dave? Well, I mean, she is uh, she was one of the the governors that pushed back one of the hardest on on the, the COVID lockdown policies. Um, she has been very much in on the culture war stuff. So to protect against the you know, if he makes that announcement early, it protects against the Ron DeSantis flank. Um, uh, she's. She's young, female, you know, kind of dents out the Kamala Harris angle. So, I mean, it's not like she's going to bring a ton of electoral votes or swing a state that, that Trump needs. But I think that um, she will be a um, – she, she's very good at, as far as her speaking style presentation. So I think she, she will be kind of the um, – the, the, buffer for, for Trump going forward. Mr. Height. I've always thought that the, the vice presidential um, person picked has always been the person that can bring a state with him. And and Trump, when he looks at his, his th that pick, he has to say, where do I have a state that is purple that I need to secure on the red side? And how many electoral votes come with it? And I think that has to be part of his strategy, which eliminates anybody from like South Carolina or Florida for states that you know he's probably going to win easily. You have to look at a, at a purple state like like Virginia or you know maybe a, a South Dakota although I don't think South Dakota is very purple. No. Um no. so which which is why I would think that no, that, Pennsylvania. that that one wouldn't be a Christy Nome because it doesn't really bring anything to him that he he doesn't already have. Now, we talked a little bit about maybe an Arizona or something like that that is a purple state and brings 11 electoral votes. So, if you were to pick somebody from uh, Arizona, then then and and they can bring secure that state on the the Trump side of things that gives him 11 electoral votes. That could be something that puts him over the top. And I think as a strategy, that's what Trump's looking for is that so person that can take him over the top. So what's your name? You're Donald Trump. You're picking one. I haven't picked a name yet. Okay, Mr. Call. Well, I, I I think he needs to look among the the you know the current uh, prospects that are run against him or, you know, announced and, and, and pick one. Uh, I think that, you know, the key, this key state is, is, is an issue, but, but one that's, that, ha, that ha brings their own, you know, supporters and could really unite the Republican party. Uh, but so like a Chris Christie's, what you yeah, say. Yeah. Absolutely. Even though they've had problems, you know, for sure. You can see them mending that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm, Why not? I mean, that's how I'm cynical. That's how the politics the, the, works the, 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 there, right? You can make a deal, you know, with the devil to, to, to <laughs> succeed. And, and so I mean, that, 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 that's a real prospect. A couple times a week you could pick Lindsey Graham and then throw him off. I mean, the, the, ten people, the ten people that would vote for Chris Christie aren't going to help Donald yeah, Trump. Yeah. Yeah. Phil Stubblefield. Yeah, uh, I think he's going to come be, up with a 
name? Okay, Carrie Lake. Carrie, Carrie Lake. Lake. Uh, she punches Ooh. a lot of uh, a lot of um, uh, other boxes. Uh, she's from the Arizona Purple State. Brings uh, 11 uh, electoral votes. She's a loyalist to uh, uh, to Trump. Always has been loyal to him. Uh, willing to oh. do anything she a he asks. Uh, she's uh, a fighter without question. Uh, she's also ideologically aligned with Trump. I think he'll be someone like Carrie Lake. So, but that doesn't help him with any moderates, does it? I mean, absolutely uh, not. But he's not looking right now. I, I think uh, the electoral votes he needs. The electoral votes, yeah. Would that have made the difference? He win Arizona. If, that's, she, a, yeah. if yeah. that's a purple state and, yeah. and that puts it on the red side of the right. ticket, that, absolutely that makes a difference. It but she be. can't win Arizona if, like she's doing now, she continues to persist that not only was Trump's election stolen, but hers was too. Um, she's... Uh, uh, very Trump-like, and that's a reason why he might pick her, because she's also a victim of this sort of unbelievable inability to accept the actual outcome of elections. And I, I, I fear, though, that the loon factor would go maybe off the charts if the two of them were running dates. <laughs> well, I mean, she yeah, didn't... But she might did, be not an arrest. She didn't win her own election, jacket, right? You know, the jacket with long arms. No, she uh, didn't win an arrest. Larry's so. dreaming again. <laughs> why, why would that help her, him if she couldn't win her own? She was doesn't. very, 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 very close. Close and, is not good enough. Yeah, but. but if you make the argument that this election was stolen from me, <laughs> it's going to appeal to the base. Right. It's I, very much a base. I just don't see how that would make any sense to go that far... Uh, Again, I'm not I'm a national politician, but I'd be trying to get independents to, to switch over to, to Trump. Um, so I'd be going for more of a centrist, Virginia, Youngkin, somebody that's yeah. like if you could flip Virginia, that's a, that's a serious. Uh, and that's and a he, 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 state he, that's tending as to a Republican. Rid. He won in a Democratic state. So uh, uh, purple state. Yeah, it I, was I think pretty, you look at Northern Democrat. Virginia, it's very blue, and then the rest of the state is is pretty red. But they went pretty blue fast, and now they're back to purplish. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Obviously, what I know about Donald Trump is I read through the newspaper talking to folks like yourself. But my sense is he's less concerned about the practicality of getting the right person as is someone that he works well with and that is his lawyer supported to him. So do you think I, he picked Pence then? Or do you no, think he, that some, they the first picked, time, Pence was picked for him the first time? Well, the first time I think it's practical, but I think Donald Trump has learned that lesson loud and clear. Go with someone that's lawyer to him first, mm -hmm. the rest I would fall down by the wayside. Tend to this yeah, next there. time the folks kick down the doors of the Capitol, he needs that person to Turn the election for him. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Oh my God. <laughs> that might uh, be um, step up for him. I don't know why you're you Larry and me laughing here, David. I, um, <laughs> there may be something going on we're not aware of. But uh, the, the other thing that's the interesting about this is if Trump could find someone like Yonkin to run with him, would that person end up like so many people who work for Trump, John Kelly, General Mattis, going in and being praised to the nth degree by Donald Trump, and then when it doesn't work out, when, uh, when they don't do a good idiot. job and he yeah. fires them, then he was yeah. such an idiot. He, he and, uh, you know, of they, course. I watched a, a list of film clips of Trump talking about how, you know, Mad Dog Mattis is the greatest, you know. And, and then when he was out, Trump saying what a terrible fool he was and how he didn't know what well, he was doing at all. Trump's used to running a uh, business. He, he he didn't realize the bureaucracy and the, the people that they put in there weren't as qualified as he thought. He's been, he, I think he listened to the bureaucracy too much in, in, when he first got elected. And he put these people in it. And then when they didn't perform to the way he wanted them to perform, he was like, I, I changed my mind. Well, that's like part of the thing. All people these are alpha personalities. They're yeah. not going to perform the way you want them to perform. They're going, you're going to put is. them, and then he's going. They're going to perform how they perform. Now, what happened was he didn't like it <laughs> didn't how like they it. were performing, yeah. and and after the, he put them in there, and he's like, all right, they got to go. What what Trump wants, and what a lot of people like Trump want, are 
are people that are going to support him no matter what. Yes men. Yes. He wants to be surrounded by yes men that tell him what he's doing is right and that he's the greatest and and all these things. They, my personal opinion, those kind of people don't make very good leaders. Uh, I want somebody around me that's going to question me uh, and, and give me uh, other viewpoints on how to correct something, and that's just not Trump. That's Governor. basic. That's management 101, but I don't yeah. think Trump adheres to management uh, 101. I would agree. The governor of Virginia, his worst nightmare is chance of hang Glenn Youngkin outside the Capitol yeah. in, 20, in, in 2028, you know? So, yeah, I bet he's going to say, I don't think so. Yeah. Thanks anyway. Um, all right. <laughs> I'm just going to keep my mouth shut, I guess. <laughs> Colin, we're going to take one last break, and then uh, we'll come back and, and, and wrap up today's show. Welcome back to Eastern Pain and Talk. Rob is on vacation. We're in the last segment here. Uh, let's wrap things up. I'm going to lead off with the Admiral. Bill? Yeah, uh, Mike, I've enjoyed this morning's discussion, but it reinforces with what I think a lot of us have been thinking, that political elections or political candidates are more involved in getting an election than what's best for the country and making a, I think, an appeal to the intellectual pursuits. I think there's been two exceptions in the history that I know of. One is Abraham Lincoln. Second was James Garfield. Did you know any of them? <laughs> that, now, that's a Rob joke. Right? Uh, Dave, David Lincoln Lincoln was his too. nephew. <laughs> I think the biggest lesson over the week is that uh, if you're going to do a crime, don't do it in the city of your uh, school's biggest rival. That's just a bad recipe for uh, people like Bob Huggins. Good point. <laughs> Mr. Carl. Um, what are what, if any, are the political implications of Alex Mooney's vote against the Republican debt that's limit? A, that's a very good bill. Point. Very good point, Larry. Um, I want to remind everybody out there that as we talk about all this politics stuff, seventy-one days from today, history is going to be made very close uh, nearby at a place called Beaver Stadium in Happy Valley. Penn State, the Mountaineers will go to Penn State to play Penn State for the first time in 30 years. It's going to be a sellout. It's yeah. going to be a wild time. Are it's they doing a whiteout for that game, Larry? I don't believe they are. Have you? I believe you obviously have. You've attended a whiteout game on. Oh yeah. Uh, one of the most impressive things I did as Rotary Governor was I was invited to a whiteout game. It was absolutely impressive. Mike Hike. I'm going to take an opportunity here to shamelessly plug one of our um, one of our uh, nonprofits here. Um, we are having CAV Community Alternatives to Violence is having another brisket dinner. If you look there in the camera, Larry and I are selling tickets. This is a wonderful meal. Um, how come you won it last time? I, no, I didn't win last time. I won the first time, and, and that's how I know it's a wonderful uh -huh. meal. Uh, full brisket. Uh, it'll it'll feed more than ten people. Um, you can get a ticket for ten bucks. Come see me or Larry. This is a great, great meal for a great organization. With that, we're going to wrap it up for the weekend. Folks, you get Rob back on Monday, and you won't get to see me for at least another month or two. Um, so you won't have to put up with, with that. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Height. You're so nice. Um, we will see you on Monday. Thank you very much. You're listening to Eastern Panda Talk without Rob Mario.